record and we're gonna, okay. Welcome to our 11th Showcase Tuesday, covering youth services, the fifth of Rotary's five areas of service. We adopted it in 2010 to recognize the positive change demonstrated by youth and young adults. They proved their strengths in leadership training, service projects, and exchange activities. These programs enrich and foster world peace and cultural understanding. Youth truly is the future of Rotary. Tonight, we will record this session. Please mute yourself during the presentations. You may unmute yourself and ask questions after each speaker presents. If you don't want to be heard, please enter your questions in the chat box. Marlene Heller will pose questions from the chat box to our speakers. I have a couple questions to begin. So how can Rotary Youth Programs nurture future Rotarians? How do Rotary's youth programs foster world peace and understanding? And what challenges do we face in resuming in-person youth exchange following what I hope is the worst of the pandemic? Tonight, we will hear about how the Rotary Youth Programs open minds and enrich cultural understandings. Our first presenter is Sarah Stackhouse, a world traveler whose experiences in Rotary Youth Programs caused her to ask all of us to open our eyes to the world. She is the author and illustrator of the book, Opening Our Eyes to the World. This is an inclusive children's book meant to empower people of all ages, ethnicities, genders, and cultures to embrace the world around them. She pursued a journey from youth exchange in Thailand to rebound, Ryla, I think twice, attending Rotaract in Scotland and concluding as a Rotarian. She graduated from Robert Gordon, Uni Robert Gordon University in Scotland and earned a master's degree from the University of Bath in international education and globalization. She recruits international students for the University of Wisconsin. Sarah is grateful for all the assistance from Rotarians along her journey. Our second presenter is Carolyn Jordan, president of the West Reading Why I'm Missing Rotary Club and secretary of the District 7430 Youth Exchange Committee. She will tell us about how we can resume in-person youth exchange following a year off and a year of virtual exchange during the COVID pandemic. Carolyn received a bachelor's degree in marketing from Shippensburg University of Pennsylvania and an MBA from Alvernia University. She's the regional director of sales for Schulte Hospitality Group. Let's begin with Sarah. All right, thank you so much everyone for joining us today. I'm gonna go ahead and try sharing my screen here quick. And I think we should be pretty good to go. All right. So yeah, as mentioned, you've learned a little bit about me so far, which is awesome. Um, so kind of what we'll do today with the 15 minute presentation that we have um, is I'll run through the book a little bit in the beginning. So that way you can kind of see the inspiration, some of the illustrations, the story that I'm trying to help children understand right at a much younger age about youth exchange, what it means to be humanitarian, what is empathy, right, in topics such as that. Um, so we'll kind of run through that and then I will tell you a little bit about my Rotary story and my journey thus far. So I'm going to go ahead and try sharing the book here. Um, so as mentioned, my book is called Opening Our Eyes to the World and it's about a little button um, the button does not officially have a name. Um, so I did not name the button because during my time as a Rotary Youth Exchange student in Thailand, right, and living in different countries around the world, you get to see people have different names, right, depending on cultures, maybe religions, um, depending where they're at in the world. So I didn't want to name this character. Um, so that way everyone could find themselves within the book. But it's about a little button that goes on all sorts of adventures. 
around the world and it's inspired by my button shoes. And so I actually have an actual pair of buttons from Thai or button shoes from Thailand. And so that is modeled after um, this little illustration here as well too. And so as mentioned here, right, it says exchanging bits of our heart will create. So it talks about exchanging different cultural adventures, things like wanderlust and the different exciting things that come right when you're preparing for an adventure such as youth exchange, going abroad, or whatever the international or domestic opportunity the students may be participating in. This is always a fun page when we get there and it's like, who wants to read this one? Um, but yes, many different languages from around the world. Um, and this one I learned quite right off the bat, right? When I um, went to Thailand, couldn't hardly speak any Thai apart from what I had studied before I left. Um, and so this one is sharing languages enables easier communication Empathizing with humanity needs no translation. And this one here, uh, this is one of my favorites as we go along in the PowerPoint in just a few minutes. Um, you'll see how real this is, right? And it's modeled after my exchange experience in Thailand. Um, this festival is called Loi Kratong. Um, and so it's celebrating festivals, some familiar, some new. Experiencing them together is even more meaningful too. And so it's meant to teach kids about nature and animals, um, really experiencing it, right? Uh, without technology, maybe sometimes, and just kind of getting away, appreciating nature, and also learning how to take care of it. And this one's always fun. As you'll see uh, in my PowerPoint, I have a lot of fun foods from Thailand, pictures to show you. So this one is, while kitchen aromas are swirling in the open air, we're enjoying global foods from places here and there. And so it's meant to teach them right as we're going along, you might get a flat tire in the middle of a rainstorm. Yes, this happened to me in Thailand. Um, and so what do you do, right? You smile, be positive, and just keep on going. This page is kind of fun. So um, it's meant to show a little bit of perspective, right, where you have students that um, maybe necessarily right in your own communities uh, in Pennsylvania there, right? You can literally go to any coffee shop and get a chai. Right now I'm in Kathmandu, Nepal, and I can also go down the street and get a chai, right? So it's meant to show that you can have those local experiences um, and also global experiences. So it doesn't mean you have to go far, right, to experience that diversity and the beauty that exists within your communities. And so anyway, as we're going along, every button's worth an adventure. The experiences are going by way too fast. Um, this one here you'll see uh, in Thailand, I did participate in a meditation. So this one is also looking inward, knowing that self-care is important too. Uh, this one is based off of one of my uh, Rai experiences of doing a dam building project in a school um, in a local village in Thailand. And this one I'd say is very rotary focused, um, building a school for places in need so kids can have opportunities to learn and read. So anyway, as we're going along, there's a bunch of different adventures and there gets to be only one button left on the shoe, right? Because all the adventures have passed. And so it's meant to ask kids, right? When you get to the last button on your shoe, what would you do with it? How would you spend it? Would you spend it on yourself or would you spend it on the community, right? For the betterment of everyone. And so anyways, they go along and they plant all of their memories, their wisdom, their lessons learned in the shape of hearts. Um, if you notice on every page, there's a little heart there. Um, and so basically it's everything that they've learned, they plant that and they grow a button tree. So that way everyone in the community can have buttons to make their own pair of button shoes and go on their own adventures and be able to share that and kind of keep the cycle going. Um, so that's just a little bit about the book, kind of a quick synopsis, but I want to do at least show you so that way you can get a little bit familiar um, before we go ahead and um, take a look at how my Broker Youth Exchange experience began. So I actually uh, hosted uh, because of my mom. Um, she's a Rotarian growing up. Um, so these are two of our exchange students, um, Leticia from Brazil and Felipe from Colombia. And so this was really my first introduction to Rotary Youth Exchange or the RIE program. Also, um, when I was an outbound student, I was able to participate in RILA, so something that is forever changing. And I would say as an outbound, it was even that much more impactful, uh, simply because you know, we were surrounded by inbounds, outbounds, people from different communities, Rotarians alike, and it really helped to build that Rotary spirit 
that we were kind of already feeling as outbounds, but it really helped bring in that rotary piece um, and to build that connection of goodwill and team building and problem solving and basically helping you prepare for your life abroad. So as you very well know, I did spend my time in Thailand. Uh, so definitely a lot of fun there. Um, so this was one of my host families uh, that I stayed with, not my first family, but my second family. And so they lived a little bit further out in the village side, right? So when I lived with them, I was able to go biking. Uh, I would go walking through the rice fields. Uh, it was really beautiful. And I would say because it was further removed from the school, I had a lot, um, I would say it was a different experience uh, than I would say my other host families where it was a little bit closer to school. I could hang out with friends or hang out after school. Um, and so basically it's meant to show you, right, that every host family, you get to live a different life. And it's not like, oh, when you first get there, you're like, oh, in Thailand, they eat dinner at 8 p.m., right? And you get to your second host family and they eat at 5 p.m. And your third family eats at 11 p.m., right? Um, so it's really meant to show kind of that diversity. And um, really, they give you each truly a different life, which is something that I really appreciated is being able to have the different host families. Um, with this family here, uh, this cute little girl isn't so little anymore, um, and she actually became a Rotary Youth Exchange student herself. Um, so I like to hope or think that I was part of inspiring her the same way I was inspired when I hosted students when I was younger as well, too. Hey, I hit the wrong button. Oh, you're good. This okay. meeting is being recorded. Um, and so this family, this was my uh, longest family that I stayed with. Um, so we can talk a little bit more about that when I came back for year two. Um, but this was a retired teacher and a retired uh, army officer. And so they had kind of empty nesters. And uh, so I really, really enjoyed my time with them as well, too. This is me first day, last day, obviously very different. Um, so I don't quite know uh, if everyone knows yet. But um, so I went on Rotary Youth Exchange, basically came back uh, to the US for two weeks and got my Thailand student visa and basically turned right back around and went back to Thailand for another year-ish um, to finish out my studies, basically to finish out senior year, graduation, prom, uh, everything with my Thai classmates. And so this is a little bit of a two-year uh, difference there. You can see some of the buildings changed and just how much I've changed um, and all the different things that I've learned. So we learned Thai dance. Uh, I also learned the sala, which is the musical instrument in the bottom there with the coconut. Uh, we learned leaf folding, candle making, baking, uh, you name it. Any, uh, I would say, Thai traditional uh, arts and crafts, you better believe I tried it. I love to learn absolutely everything, um, and it really helped me to understand the culture a lot better as well, too. These are some pictures of dance class and one of the performances that we did. Uh, as mentioned, right, trying global foods from places here and there and everywhere. Um, so these are some of the fun ones that we were able to try in Thailand. Ice cream inside of bread. These are some of the fruits. Um, top brown one are eggs. And then here you can see we get a little bit more seafoody. Um, we have chicken feet there. And I was also able to try my very first bug. Um, and so it was kind of interesting. Um, I tried it right when I first got there. And then with um, the girl that ended up becoming an exchange student, right, her family, um, we would eat bugs, I don't want to say more often, but it's kind of like a salty, crispy chip french fry thing. Um, so with them, I would say I ate them a little bit more often, but not, not super often. Um, just a few more fun foods for you all to enjoy taking a look at. And do you recognize this festival, right? Um, so this is one of the ones from the book, right? That inspired um, one of the pages that talks about the festival. This was really fun because we were able to go ahead and teach my Thai friends all about what Halloween was. We did bobbing for apples, Halloween costume contests, um, donuts on a string, we carved pumpkins, and we did this at my uh, district chair's house for Rotary. So. Um, really grateful for that experience and just being able to exchange cultures, um, right? We participate in their festivals and they were able to participate in ours as well, too. This is one of the meditation experiences that I did. So 14 days, they dropped me off, right? No talking, you're fasting. Um, definitely one of the best experiences of my life, for sure. 
Just a few pictures here of Rotary in Thailand. So we did take three different trips. We had the northern trip. Uh, this was the central trip in Bangkok. And then this is the southern trip of all the different beaches. And so it was definitely a really great opportunity to be able to participate in that. Um, I know in the US we do east coast, west coast, right? Um, and so it really gives you the ability to see the landscape and the breadth of the entire country, um, which is something I really appreciated. And this was one of the, um, I guess we did on the central trip, we were able to visit the Rotary Foundation. And in the bottom corner, um, I had a music performance at one of the district conferences for all the Rotarians. So definitely quite involved um, in quite a few different Rotary projects when I was there. This was when I came back the second time uh, for my second year. I was the only girl on the boys soccer team, uh, which was super awesome to be able to do. So growing up in Michigan, I was the only girl on the boys hockey team. So this was nothing new for me, um, but definitely a lot of fun and um, I think it was really good for the boys as well, too. This is Azati. So she's from Indonesia. And she is, or I guess she was, an inbound student when I was an outbound. And so we were in the same district, and I got to meet her. We became really good friends. And so I was able to go visit her in Indonesia as well. You've got prom, you've got graduation. Um, and imagine coming into the country, right? They're holding your name on a sign, right? Uh, upside down, Sarah, welcome to Thailand. Uh, and you know, absolutely no one, don't speak the language. Um, and this was my very last day two years later. And I had my entire class travel two hours to send me off to the airport. Um, my physics teacher came, my host families came. Um, I would say probably one of the most beautiful experiences of my life. Um, and so really just to you know those friendships, right? I still talk to my friends all the time, um, see how they're doing and they keep in touch with me as well too. And just a little bit here, I was a bridesmaid in my host sister's <coughs> wedding. Um, as mentioned, I did study in Scotland, England as well too. So these are just some of the pictures from that. One of the best parts about my Rye experience, uh, when I left, right, I promised, I said, I, I wanna come back and I want to become a teacher at the school I was a student at. Um, so long and behold, when I was studying my master's in the UK, I came to do my thesis in Thailand, and I ended up coming back to teach uh, alongside the teachers that were teaching me when I was an exchange student. Um, so that was a really humbling experience to be able to get back to the school um, in the place that I called home. Just a few things as a current Rotarian as mentioned, um, I travel quite a bit. As I mentioned, I'm in Kathmandu, Nepal as we speak, heading to Malaysia, India um, as well too. So I travel um, you know, all over the place and everywhere I go, I try to find the different Rotary projects and things that I can get involved in. Uh, this was a US government program uh, to India. So I was able to go there for three months to study Urdu, one of the languages that is spoken in India. I've attended some of the international conferences. Um, we've donated some computers and tables and chairs to the local villages in Thailand through my current Rotary Club. We've done some different community projects. Um, this is called Rainworks. And so basically um, when it rains, these beautiful messages come out. So it's like artwork um, that comes alive with water. So that was pretty fun. Um, we do a lot of food projects. This is a book donation project that we have going on. Um, so I know that was kind of quick, 15 minutes in and out, right? Um, but yeah, so this is just kind of back to the book, but just showing you um, kind of how the perspective of the different adventures I've gone on relate to the pictures in the book. So this was one of my travels in Scotland. Um, these are the actual button shoes that inspired the story. Uh, some hot air balloon pictures that I've gone on. And yeah, that's pretty much, I think we're at time, uh, time for questions. Uh, so yes, thank you so much for listening. I know it was kind of a lot, um, but yeah, I would just say definitely very grateful for all the Rotarians, um, everything that you do every single day um, to make these experiences possible for students like myself as an exchange student, um, because without volunteers like you, it really wouldn't be possible. And it truly changes lives everywhere we go. And it's a gift, right? That keeps on giving. Absolutely. So thank you so much. Sarah, you're a gift that keeps on giving. I got to tell you, um, oh. I know we have questions. And uh, so folks, uh, raise your hand to speak up if you've got a question. Um, I, I know there's something in the chat box too. 
Tim, unmute yourself. Just curious, who did the illustrations for your book? So I actually did the illustrations. Um, I never considered myself an artist. Um, and I've always had this concept for the book. I knew I wanted to write it. I knew it was about the button shoes. I had all that planned out. And um, the part that always held me up was the illustrations. And so finally, I'm like, all right, Sarah. So it's on my bucket list to be a published author at 25. And it was probably four months before my 26th birthday. And I'm like, all right, Sarah, it's now or never. You got to make it happen. Um, so I started tinkering around and one page turned into another and turned into the book. So um, something that I never, never in a million years would have imagined I could have done. Um, so yeah, definitely, I would say the most challenging part, um, but the most, I would say, rewarding part as well, too. Any more questions? So, so basically what you're saying, Sarah, is there's nothing you can't do. No, oh, <laughs> there's many things that I can't do, but I am a person um, that has a lot of bucket list items. And when you cross one off, what do you do? You always add another. Um, so the list just keeps on growing. So definitely a lot of fun things, a lot of fun things to be involved in for sure. Jean, did you have a question? You're muted, Jean. Trying to get that unmuted. Sarah, I'm just so impressed with uh, all that you've done and what I consider courage to go twice overseas like that by yourself as a young woman. What, where did all that come from? When did you realize in your life that you wanted to do all of this? Yeah. Um... So when I was, so right, I grew up playing ice hockey. My goal was the Olympics. Um, and to be honest, a lot of the girls I used to play with are now Olympians. Um, so I get to watch them do that all the time. Um, but my career ended early due to some injuries, um, mostly concussions. And so I was in, I think it was 10th grade and I had to figure out what was next for me. Um, and that was hard, right? Because I grew up playing hockey my whole life. I focused on my studies, but primarily I played sports quite a bit. Um, and so I was going through one day when I was home with my concussion. Um, and I found this thing called Rotary Youth Exchange. And I was scrolling through and there's like all these beautiful, amazing countries you can go to. And I brought it to my mom. I'm like, mom, I want to go to the Faroe Islands. Um, and she's like, Sarah, you know, we used to host Rotary Exchange students, right? I was a Rotarian. And I was like, oh, I never put the two and two together. Um, and so from then on, it really became a passion. And um, something for me when prior to the concussion, I was very math science based. Um, and after the concussion, as people will say, sometimes the brain flip flops, right? And I became very much more language and um, art driven, I would say. Um, so that's really kind of the, the plot twist or right the twist in the story that uh, really inspired me to go ahead and apply for the program. Thank you. Um, Terry Reed. Uh, Sarah, your book is written for what ages? Yeah, um, I've had people buy them for just newborns, right, that kind of want to introduce the topics. But honestly, I would say K through five. So I go to elementary schools um, across the U.S. to do different book readings. And, you know, you can have the same type of conversations, um, right, with kindergartners as you can with fifth graders, just in a little bit more depth. Um, and so basically it depends how deep you want, because the book is quite deep, right? As an adult, you can get a lot of different things. Uh, you know, you can think through a lot of different things, but um, mostly the kids, like honestly, fifth graders love it. Kindergartners love it. Um, okay. So it kind of has a, a wider span there for sure. Hmm. I can see it coming to my grandchildren real fast. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Yeah, it's really fun. And it's amazing how smart the kids are. You know, they, when I go to the classrooms, I'm just absolutely floored by how much they know. And when they see languages pop up, they get so excited. And when they hear or you talk about what's a humanitarian, right? It's a big word to spell. Spelling wise, you're kind of like, whoa, but it's a concept, right, that they can completely understand. Um, and so it is trying to introduce those things to them at a much younger age. And um, right now, 
I work with uh, high school age students um, internationally, right? So I basically recruit international students to come study in the US. And so I also work with domestic high school students. And I find that a lot of them don't necessarily find out about exchange unless they're exposed to it or study abroad, at least until high school, if not college or university. Um, and so that's kind of, you know, they're like, oh, I didn't even know I could do that, right? Um, and so that's why really the main motivation behind the book is to teach kids at a younger age that those things exist. So when you have a third grader or a fifth grader that they're like, when I get to high school, I want to become an exchange student, right? So it's something that they can think about and dream about and kind of have that passion from a much younger age. Well, thank you for writing it. Yeah, thank you. It's a lot of fun. So Sari, you've done so much already. What's your next big challenge? Great question. Um, so if you would have asked me a week ago, I did have a half marathon on the list um, and I just crossed that off. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of exploring, to be honest, what's next. Um, I am in Nepal, so I do have the dream to do um, Mount Everest base camp um, and also Mount Kilimanjaro. So those are two things that I have on the docket, hopefully for this year. Um, those are two challenges I would like to accept. But um, if we're talking like book author wise, I am writing a second book um, and hopefully a third book. So one that I would really love to do um, is write, you know, our little rotary blazers with all the pins and gadgets and everything galore um, is I would love to actually write one um, with Rotary about a traveling pin, right? That goes in all sorts and travels the world and learns kind of the process of exchange, how you apply and go through that. Um, so that's one of them. And then the other one is opening our eyes to up north. So everyone has a different perspective, right? Where is up north? It's a feeling we all understand, right? Um, but maybe the destination is different. And so it's meant to teach kids how to say hello and goodbye to places and be able to process through those emotions um, and understand what it means, you know, to take or to go to a place and to take what it is with you, um, you know, who you become and how do you keep that person and maybe leave some of it behind and kind of transition um, when you come and go to a place. So, yeah, a lot of big dreams, a lot of big dreams to be had. Um, but yeah, those are some of the few things. How has Rotary helped you with your current job trying to get, you know, more students for UW? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so when I travel the world, I always try to attend the Rotary meetings. Um, which is a lot of fun. Um, I've met Rotarians around the world. So I travel about three months every semester, two to three months, probably 15 countries or so. Um, and so when I go to these countries, right, I'm like, I have moms and dads, right, everywhere I go. I'm like, mom, I'm coming to Mumbai, you know, and I'll stay with a Rotarian when I go there. Um, and it adds that human perspective, right, um, which has been a lot of fun, which I would much rather do that um, and be able to build those connections. So definitely that. Um, I have youth exchange friends from around the world. Um, so still keeping contact with them. Um, so really it is, it's just network building, getting to know people, their story, um, their culture, languages, everything like that. That's really what I love. So when I travel, I definitely always try to um, visit the Rotary Clubs everywhere I go. You really have a boring life, don't you? <laughs> That's what they tell me. <laughs> yeah, no, it keeps me keeps me good. And, uh, you know, it's it's really an honor to be able to travel and, you know, represent the U.S. And that's what I always tell the youth exchanges. I'm like, you're a walking billboard, right? Not only for yourself, your family, your Rotary Club, um, you know, your city, but also for your country. And so all your actions, everything you say and do reflect those things. And um so yeah, I, I absolutely love it and I'm grateful for every opportunity. And really it all stemmed from Rotary. I think that's the main thing is, you know, being at home with my concussion at a time when it was probably a lower place in my life, trying to figure out what is next. Um, Rotary was the thing that gave me something to hold on to um, and honestly has given me every opportunity um, that I've been able to have so far. Have you been on every continent? Um, not yet. Not yet. We've still got a few to get to. Oh, got to get working, girl. <laughs> I know. Antarctica, here we come. So, yes. 
Charlie, you I have think, a question? I think our past district governor, Janet, has a question. Okay, I saw Charlotte's hand up too. So, uh, well, uh, let Janet go. <laughs> oh, thanks. Well, actually, Sarah, I know you live in Wisconsin now because I'm from Wisconsin and I do know where up north is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> where is your up north? Well, it's anywhere other than Racine, where I was from. So, okay, yeah, but as long as we're headed northerly, it's fine. Right, yeah. right. Somewhere right. up north. Yeah. We yeah. all know where it is. So great story. Thank you for sharing. I started life as a Rotarian. Before a Rotarian, I was a host mom. So, okay. Well, thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. Thanks it, for sharing your story. Yeah. Thank you. Charlotte. Charlotte. Go ahead. I was uh, wondering how this uh, fits into a career as you get older. Yes, is it preparing I know you for something? <laughs> um, to be honest, uh, I've definitely looked at um, the foreign service, um, something like that, to be able to um, promote education, more the cultural side of things um, abroad for sure. So I've looked at careers like that, um, thought about going to law school. So we'll see kind of what those next steps are. Um, but for now, to be able to get paid to talk to students about what's their passion about education, um, about coming to study and being an international student, it honestly doesn't get much better than that. Um, and I absolutely love it. And uh, yeah, we'll see where the time brings me. Thanks. Yeah, question. What, what advice would you give to a 15 or 16 year old getting ready to go out on exchange that might be a little bit hesitant? Yeah. Um, so one of the things I, I always remember, I was in the Chicago airport. I picked up the phone, called my mom. I said, mom, I can't understand anything because it was a Korean air flight. Okay. So everything was in Korean and nobody looks like me. And I just remember that feeling. Um, and so you get on the plane, right? And you're like, all right, here we go. Um, nothing could have really prepared me for that, to be honest. Um, and yeah, I would just tell them really to live every moment because it goes by way too fast, much like life, right? Um, that's why I have my bucket list and uh, we know that it is so precious and maybe at that age, you can't always necessarily, I mean, I know people do, but the time just keeps on going and keeps on going. And so it is being able to just make the most of every moment. I know they say, say yes to everything. Um, that's advice people normally give as well too. Um, but I think it is getting to know yourself um, and not necessarily saying yes to everything, but right, saying yes to the things that matter to you, saying yes to the things that challenge you, um, and that really will help them to become the best version of themselves. Um, it's really the chance of a lifetime to grow, to learn, um, and really the language is the key. The language is the key to everything. Once you can get past that, um, it really opens your opens your eyes, sorry, but it, it really does. It opens your eyes, it opens your heart um, to the culture in a way that without the language, you never would have been able to understand the things. Um, so I would say definitely putting the time in for the language would be really important as well too. So you are fluent now? Um, yeah, so that was one of the very fun things. Um, that I was able to do when I was on uh, exchange, right? So I went back for the second year and that second year, I would say really solidified my language. Um, so when I went back to Thailand for my master's thesis, I conducted all of the interviews, all of the research in Thai. Um, so I was able to talk to all the, um, you know, the people in the village in Thai, and then I had to translate everything to English and then be able to do my thesis. So um, just imagine from like not even be able, we call this the why, not even be able to why properly when I first got there, you know, somebody ka, and um, being able to complete my master's thesis in Thai, I never would have imagined, never would have imagined. Um, so really the, the language is everything. Sure, everybody can Sarah? do it, can't they? You are really <laughs> an inspiration. Hey, Sarah, I, I, I have to, I have to draw a line here because we have another. Yes, statement. I was going to say it's Look, time. So, yes. so yeah. So anyway, thanks for that inspirational journey to see the world with open yes, eyes. Thank you. Uh, I think you're inspiring people tonight to uh, find more ways to support our youth programs, including Interact, Youth Exchange, Rotaract, STEM Youth Explorers, Camp Nidig, and whatever we have. Interact is certainly a big one. Um, I'm now going to ask, um, by the way, will you allow us to um, share your email address if people have more questions? 
Yes, absolutely. Yep. Okay. I can send you um, some information, then they can contact or anything for sure. Thanks, Sarah. Okay, listen, yep. let's, let's then welcome Carolyn Jordan, who will tell us about our youth exchange program. All right. Well, good evening, everybody, or morning if you're listening to this later. But I want to say uh, thank you, Sarah, for a perfect tee up as to why people should participate in Rotary Youth Exchange. Um, after the pandemic that has gone through us, we are back in person and we are more excited than anything about that. So for the 2022-2023 academic year, Rotary Youth Exchange is on. So let me tell you a little bit about why, why you should, why, why it coincides with Rotary, why it's such a great and amazing an amazing program for us. So the Rotary um, Youth Exchange, if you look at this picture that I have on the, on the front of the screen here for you, that is taken uh, each September, we go up to the South Mountain YMCA and it's our kickoff orientation weekend. And the sign in the middle says, caution, future world and local leaders at work and at play. And truly that is a very cool sign. And I feel like that's almost the mission for Rotary Youth Exchange is it's guiding youth to get out of their comfort zone, try something new, do a little more exploration, exploration and really um, come to terms with who, who you are when you when you get out on exchange, you really learn so much about yourself. So it, that's our, uh, our kickoff that we do for orientation. And that's the first time that our inbound students, as we call them, those are students from other countries staying here with us in District 7430. And that's the first time they all get together and meet. So it's really, um, it's an amazing weekend, so you should join us sometime if you, if you can. So the Rotary Youth Exchange Program, it touches on many of the areas or the avenues of service that Rotary has. So it, it makes your club stronger um, by the service that, the, that you're doing for your local communities um, with your exchange students. You talk about vocational services and how you can contribute there. We have exchange students, um, some of them need a little bit of counseling when they get here, like what have I done when they get off the plane and they, uh, they realize they left everything they know and love behind them, but they're going to find out that there are more things to know and love ahead of them. So we have to help them get over that hurdle. Um, so we call them people, uh, we have beauticians that will donate haircut services for them. We have eye doctors if they break their glasses. So um, there's different vocational services. We had a student that wanted to be a veterinarian and we let them go and job shadow uh, vets in the United States here. So there's really just, you can you can use your vocation and help these students out in many ways. We absolutely, the service above self comes right through with community service and we can improve the quality of, of their lives, our lives and the public interest around us. You talk about inter international service and it's just promoting peace and understanding. Sarah talked a lot about the relationships and the, um, the networking that she has and you know, she, much like my daughter who has gone on exchange, has friends probably on every continent, <laughs> even though she hasn't been to them all. I would bet you probably have a friend on every continent um, that you could call and, and rely on and talk something over. And just the, the world for as large as it is becomes so small after you become an exchange student. And then just our youth services, empowering our youth and our young professionals to go um, through this really a, a leadership development program for them, whether they, they like to believe it or not, because... Um, they can change who they are while they're out in the, the community. I had an example of a, a twin that was with us, and I didn't know he was a twin until the end of the year, the very last meeting that we had, and he finally told us he was a twin. And I said, how could you not tell me that? He says, because he's tired of being called the twin. Like, so he went a whole year where he didn't even know he was a twin. So, I mean, some people did, but they didn't let me in on it. So, uh, yeah, so it's uh, it's really interesting on how kids, just something small like that, that can change their perspective on life and how they look at things. So what is youth, youth exchange? I'll talk about that. Sarah gave us a great, a great lead up, but it says um, exchange isn't a year in your life, but it's a life in a year. And it's really amazing the, the development that comes through with each of the students as they do that. So how does Rotary Youth Exchange work? Um, you heard the stories on, on experience they get and host families and applications to get in. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but there are so many volunteers that are vested in this Rotary Youth Exchange program. It starts with RI. Um, we got the zones that are involved and districts and committees and our clubs. Um, you've got youth exchange officers for your club. Then you've got a Rotarian counselor that will help your students. So that's just uh, the, the tip of the iceberg that goes through there. When you look at the organizational chart for the Rotary International, the Youth Exchange Program, Every student has support from Rotarians, both in the country where they're living and the country where they are from. Um, they got host, their host families, they have their Rotary counselors, they've got their committee people that are here. 
Um, and we all try to take on the committee a student or two to take under our wing and we don't pre-assign them. We see who we who we bond with when we're at the first events and say, all right, like I want to I want to keep an eye on that one while they're here. And they don't have to be in your club, but they can just be um, in your community and somebody else they can reach out to in case they need anything or have a question or a concern. And same with our outbound students when they go out and leave the country. Um, maybe they have a question they really just don't want to tell their parents they have this question because they think they might get upset or be afraid for them um, or you know, like they're having trouble in school and they just don't want to tell anybody but they can call one of us and we've talked many a students through um, situations that are monumental at the time to them but really just a, a small hurdle to get over when you look back on it. So um, one little area that pops out there that wasn't officially on the slide, but is Essex. So I wanna tell you a little bit about Essex and how District 7430 is supported by them. So Essex is the Eastern State Student Exchange. I'll say that five times fast. Um, before the students go out, Essex really helps with the, um, help us set up the financial responsibilities. We do have orientations for the students. They set the guidelines on the materials that need to be covered. Um, they help us with our travel. We coordinate through a travel agent and we get the travel for the students. Uh, insurance needs, that's always a big concern for parents when kids come and go. And anything they need to do for medical changes while they're, while they're gone, they help guide us through all that. The other things that the Eastern State Student Exchange does, us, does for us during the year, they um, give us a platform. We can upload monthly reports, both for our inbound students and our outbound students. So we can keep track of all of them. We definitely have monthly check-ins in with them. We read the reports and we wanna make sure that we understand exactly what it is that they are, they are experiencing and doing and making sure they're having a good exchange while they're gone or while they're here. Um, and it really reinforces the role of the ambassador. They are there representing their country in, in another country and really setting the, setting the stage. And the last thing Essex does is make sure all the students return home. <laughs> so, um, they do have to go back after the end of the exchange year. So some of them, that's a little harder than others for them to, uh, to say goodbye to what has just changed in 10 months of their life. They do have some guiding rules. This is not a vacation. You are not going to another country for a year for vacation. This is life. You are going to travel directly to the host family. You're going to, they're going to pick you up at the airport or somebody within the Rotary Club will get you and drop you at the host family. You're not, um, you know, if you're in Europe, you're not hopping on the Euro train and running all over the place, but it's really, you can go out on Rotary approved tours that are uh, with people who are vetted and background checked, but it's really, it's really life in another country, not a, not a vacation for anyone. So Essex helps uh, us with establishing the rules and the guidelines and that. District 7430 has a great committee and there's always room for more if anyone wants to join on with us. But we do monthly orientations before the students actually leave on exchange. Uh, Pre-pandemic, I would tell you these orientations are with current exchange students who are living in our country. And then they are, um, we combine the two of them. So you have ones that are about to go out and ones that have been gone from their, their, their homes for about five months when they first meet up. So it really gives them a lot of peer network and questions they can ask each other that they may or may not want to ask an adult. Um, and then it gives the committee a time to, to bond and get together with them. They're, we're available for them, whether it's texting or phone calls. Most of them like texting over that. We, you know, Snapchat, Instagram, whatever we need to get on to make sure we connect with the students. So the committee has been around youth exchange students for a while. Most of us have hosted exchange students. Some of us have been exchange students and others um, have children who are exchange students either currently or about to go or have just gone or recently gone. So we do have a lot of experience with the, uh, the youth and the emotions that go along with that. Give a shout out to our website, rotary7430yep.org for the youth exchange program. Um, in there we have, if you're an expiring exchange student, things you would have to do in order to become an exchange student to go out. It's really a three-year commitment. It's the year before you go when you apply and you go through the orientations to get there. It's the year of your exchange. And then it's the year when you get back. We call it the rebound year. Um, so how you're gonna get the reverse culture shock. You have the first culture shock when you get there. And then what has happened is your life has changed. You've experienced so many other things and you come back and it seems like time has stood still for everybody else here. Um, or you're not quite familiar with what your friends are doing or you know things that would change for you. So we help them on the way back as well. And then they help us with our inbound students again the next year when we get the kids that come back and stay in the community. So this will tell you all about how to, how to be an exchange student um, for there. 
We have some pictures and images from our past students and what it takes to be a host family. Host families are, are, are such an important part of the, the Rotary Youth Exchange Program. So we wanna make sure that the uh, host families know what is expected of them. There is a short-term exchange, which is over the summers. We did a virtual one last summer because we couldn't do the in-person one. And the bulk of our students exchanged with Italy and we had one from Germany and they did online exchange, but I really feel the, the bonding and the friendship is not there like it is for the students that are face to face and, and living life and experiencing the world in another, in another country. So we've been pretty sure our committee and we try to keep our calendar um, up to date, though we do have to update it. We just had a committee meet, meeting. <laughs> so that will be updated in the very, very near future. Um, so right now, if you're wondering, is my club participating this year? So if your club's on the screen, then your club's participating this year. We're looking for two to three more um, host clubs in order to get us up to an even 10. So right now, um, these are some of the countries that are we're gonna be meeting students from, a mix of girls and boys that will be coming in. So it'll be really neat to, uh, to see who they are and where they land in each of our, in each of our school districts. So if your club does want to host, if you're not on the list, what, what does it take? So for an outbound student, someone who's going to, who's an American citizen that wants to go live somewhere else for a year, as an exchange student, they're between 15 and 18 years old. And then there's no fees to the club for that. But we do ask that you host an inbound student because this is an exchange program. So if one goes out, one comes back in. So as an inbound, um, the students get assigned from Essex, the Eastern State Student Exchange Program. And then as a club, you need to find the host family or up to three. Um, you know, some people just do one for the year, but it's really nice as, if you, as Sarah had said, to get some experience with different host families and see that even though you're in the same, say school district, people do things differently at home. Um, they do have to, your club would need a youth exchange officer and a club counselor that would have to pass background clearances in order to um, communicate and get information from the students. Um, you would get to meet the student online before the exchange starts thanks to Zoom and um, applications like this. You get them from the airport. And then while they're here, you have you know, an entire academic school year, about 10 months where you house them, you feed them and whatever you would do with a child of your own, you, you, they're part of your family. So the club does pay an inbound fee of $700 to the youth exchange program and it helps support some of the, the activities I'm gonna tell you about in a few minutes. And then we do give the students a stipend. The average stipend right now is expected to be $125 to each student for each month. So the host family doesn't have to pay for everything they do. If you would go out to dinner with your family, then you know, the student's part of your family. You pay for that as you would for your own biological children. But if the student wants to go to the movies with just their friends and they're gonna you know, go after school, then that's where that $125 stipend can come into play to, uh, to support that. And then of course at the end, sometimes the hardest part is you have to return them to the airport at the end of the exchange and send them back to their biological families. So, uh, and then it's uh, neat to see how many students come back and travel again because the relationships that they've made. So you think, what is a Rotary counselor? They're a liaison for them. They advocate for the students. They support the students. They help with the culture immersion. They help with language resources if you need them. And they can come in any size, shape, and color. They can be young, they can be old. But what we like to do here is find somebody that, um, that the student connects with and bonds with and make sure there's someone they can trust when they, when they do that. So how can your club participate? Sponsor a student. Like that's like jump in, two feet, let's go. Hit the ground running. Um, you can help find host families for an inbound student. You can help recruit students just talking about it and letting people know that this opportunity is out there. The Rotary Youth Exchange Program is much more affordable than many other programs that are out there. In our district, the current um, outbound application fee is $2,400, and that includes a um, bunch of trips and materials and health insurance and um, stuff like that for the students. And then it's just an amazing, an amazing way to go through there. So um, how else can you participate? Maybe you want to do something cool with your family or something you think is just like normal for you may not be normal for an exchange student. So share your vacation home if you have one, like if you go down to the beach or up to the mountains and just having them get that experience if it's not similar to where they live, you go there for a reason to escape and they might appreciate that as well. And there's always room to serve on our district committee. So this uh, quote here really, really touched me when I, when I read it. It was like, every day there's a moment when I realize that I am halfway across the world and truly having the time of my life. 
And you talked about the buttons that the students collect. They're here behind that quote. But you just um, think when the students come, uh, we <laughs> always bring their flags with them from their country flags. And they are so proud of those when they all get together and they all keep them and, and carry them around with them. They make different relationships. The bottom right corner is a fundraiser that we did during the pandemic when some of the students were stuck in country where they couldn't get home um, because of the travel restrictions. And we uh, found other activities and online activities and things we could do to help with the pandemic um, as well. And the bottom left corner is the picture of some of the committee members as long, along with the people who did the virtual youth exchange during the summer of the pandemic. So that was a fun group. And at the end of the summer, we did a community service project with the ones here in the United States. And we went up and painted picnic tables at a camp that needed some, some assistance because they didn't have the staffing to help do that over that summer. So it's really a great way to get involved. So do you wanna join us for something? Absolutely, you are welcome. Save the dates. This calendar is gonna be uploaded into our Rotary Youth Exchange website very, very soon. But we start out with uh, orientations. There's always a little bit of fun and a little bit of learning for everything that we do. If you're going to the Purple Pinky this fall with the district, um, you will actually see our youth exchange students there. Our outbound interviews and for the uh, following school year, they're going to be held up at DeSalle University again on November 13th. So uh, save the date and get your students prepared to go out there. Things that they may not participate in or have participated in the past, they get to, uh, Ambler has a holiday parade. So we let them march in the parade and some kids have never done that where you march down Main Street. Um, take them on a ski trip where some haven't even seen snow before. It could be their first exposure to snow. Uh, of course, we want them to see Washington DC. So we're gonna plan a trip down there. We don't have exact dates firmed up for that one yet. Um, we're gonna do a day of service and hopefully with the environmental committee around Earth Day next year. Of course, we'll go to district conference and then we have a farewell picnic. So these are all opportunities for students to, to build peer relationships. So when they are gone out on exchange, they can, um, they can have good friends that have gone through similar things and similar trainings. And while they're here in exchange, it also gives them a, a commonality and a way to get to know each other in here. So we do appreciate all that. So in Rotary, there's no strangers. There's only friends you haven't met. So join the Rotary Youth Exchange Committee. Come out to uh, visit us on 7430yep.org and uh, check out uh, how to get in touch with us. So who wants to be an exchange student? <laughs> Bob, yeah, yeah, Sarah's like, I want to go back again. Yeah. So uh, any questions, Bob, that I can? Well, you know, I'm sure there are a lot of questions. If you could minimize your, your uh... PowerPoint, we'll uh, yeah. take a look at our, there we go. Now we can see each other. Who has a question for uh, Carolyn? Marlene, any, oh, Jean does. Well, um, Carolyn, I'm curious as to what kind of interview process you do to determine a host family. Sure. So the host family, uh, application process is monitored by the Department of State, uh, but we do need Rotarians to execute that. So the first step is the Rotarian who's executing that has to go through their background clearances to get that. It's a typical, um, you know, if you've been through the criminal checks, um, you get references that people give references to you. Anybody that lives in the host family that's 18 or over has to go through those same background checks. Mm -hmm. um, we also send a Rotarian to their home to, um, I don't want to say inspect, but check the home, you know, <laughs> don't be afraid to have us over. We're not going to, you know, we, white we, finger we inspect. Clock it. Yeah. yeah. What's that? We do inspect. Yeah. You have to make sure that um, there's suitable sleeping conditions, that there's bathing conditions, that there's, you know, there's not holes in the wall, that there's, you know, it's right. a, you'd be comfortable with your own child going to that, to that place. So um, yeah, so they do a, a check in there. Once the students arrive in country, we do check back in with them and we do monthly check-ins. Um, try to do them in person, but you can do them a couple over the phone, but make sure you see that the host families are happy with the student and the students are happy with the host family. So we do Good. take the, the host family process very seriously. Good. Yeah. 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 I've had cons some concerns and um, just, it sounds like there's a very involved process and I'm glad to hear that. 
Yes, and we do all our applications go up to the Department of State, so they go through background checks and they get clearances and everything as well. Right. So that is monitored outside of our district. Good, thank you. You're welcome. Marlene, do we have questions? Yeah, um, to start with Carolyn, what drew you personally to become active with the Youth Exchange? Sure, I was in Rotary, uh, gosh, maybe 10 or 12 years before I got active with the Youth Exchange program. And I got involved with it because I had a 15 year old daughter who decided that she was gonna be an exchange student. And uh, you know, she came home from school one day with this application that you know, one of the 12 or $15,000 one, I'm like, mm, you're not gonna do that. And she got mad at me and I said, but you can do it through Rotary. I was like, so let's you know, turn the corner here and go look this way. So she went through the application process. And then as part of that, I hosted an exchange student at my home while she was gone. Um, and then I kept driving him to meet other exchange students and do different exchange. You saw our calendar once a month, we're doing something. And some of them were far enough away that if it was a day trip, I was like, I'll just stay and hang out because until I drive home and drive back, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And then I became friends with the people on the exchange committee and, and now they don't let me leave. <laughs> and Where, I don't want to leave. I love it. <laughs> Where did your, your daughter go? Uh, she went to Italy. She lived in Sardinia, Italy for um, her junior year in high school. Then she came home and did her senior year here back at, at, in the United States. And then she wasn't quite ready for college. So she did a gap year and she went out on a second exchange because she was uh, young enough that she could. And then she lived in Bolivia for that year. Way to take advantage of it. That's great. Yes. Uh, ironically, one of the students that was here in Bolivia during her senior year in high school, she ended up by chance getting placed in his hometown. So she already had a friend when she got there. So that That's was neat. Great. Yeah. So how, how long a term of hosting is required of a parent, of a host parent? Sure. Um, that depends on the student and the club. So um, in our club, we try to get two host families where you would get them in August when they arrive before school starts. You know, we get them in about a week before school starts to get settled and over the jet lag and registered for classes. Um, and we like to keep them in the same spot till just after the holidays. They can enjoy the family they've got to got to know through the holidays. And then uh, come January, we put them with someone else for the second half of the year. Sometimes the bond with that first family is so tight. I will tell you one student, when I picked her up and moved her to the second host family, I felt like I was um, ripping someone out with child services. <laughs> like, I mean, the tears were crying. I was like, she's moving a mile down the road. <laughs> you know. Um, so uh, yeah, they just make such bonds. So what happened with that student? She ended up going back to that host family again for the last like month and a half of the year because they just wanted to spend more time together before they went back. So um, it, yeah, it, it fluctuates, but there's no set dates. And some families stay for the whole year. My daughter in Italy for her exchange there, she was with the one family the entire year. They didn't move them, so. If you could tell a potential host family one or two things to prepare them, what would it be? Um, to, to not be afraid, you know, <laughs> um, it's really, it's an amazing experience that is going to, to change your world. People are sometimes afraid, like, what if I don't get along with the student or what if, you know, they don't like the food we eat or what if, and there's, you could, what if everything out of there. So um, it's, it's just keep your mind open or how do we say, keep your eyes open, right? So, <laughs> um, and for great opportunities because the, the bonds and the relationships, like I still talk to exchange students that have stayed you know, with my home. I still talk to ones that have come through our club that have come through the district and the, um, it's gonna change your life forever in a way that you just can't even imagine. For a club that has hosted every year for many years, but seems to be going back to the same host families year after year. Yep. And those families are starting to not be able to do it anymore. What would you suggest to help them kickstart getting new families? What, what kind, do you have a magic answer to that? That's a hard one. Yeah, it's a hard one. Um, <laughs> ask everybody, you know, don't assume not one of the host families that I found, I called one of my good friends who I never thought would be a host family. I said, Hey, your daughter's still in high school. You've got to know people like, 
who who can I get to be a host family and how can you help me do this? She's like, well, what about us? And I was like, well, uh, <laughs> so don't assume somebody doesn't want to do it, you know? Um, and they were fantastic host parents and uh, just, you know, doing that. So talking to everybody about it that you do. Um, you can also go through the guidance counselors. You can go through the language department at school because a lot of students that study language are more interested in going out on exchange. Um, if the school has a website where you can put like posters or um, probably not posters anymore in this day and age, but announcements, I guess I would say, that get sent out to people in the school district. So host families don't have to be Rotarians. Um, a lot of them turn into Rotarians by the time they're done hosting. But, uh, you know, we will take anybody as long as they can pass the background clearances and they live in the school districts where they where they are supported by exchange students. Yeah, okay, so that answers a very important question. They don't have to be Rotarians. Correct. Membership drive, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I said we most of them turn into Rotarians, but. Okay. So but um, then, do you have any more questions? That, that basically covers it, I think. Does anybody okay. else? In the audience have any questions? I have one. Florida. Um, Carolyn, how is the placement determined? Like I, you know, we had a kid from Sao Paulo and I don't think he said, I really want to go to Kutztown, Pennsylvania, you know? Yeah. So when the students sign up and they register, um, they they in our district, I'm not, every district may not be the same. Some districts they actually take tests and the person who skies scores the highest gets to pick their country first for what's available. Um, and then in our district, we have the kids pick their top five countries that they want to go to, and we try to get them into their top one or two. Some of them um, don't make it because grades need to be a certain level. And, you know, if they're not a straight A student, then, you know, you can't go to this country or um, some of it is dependent on host families too. So we have some host families that are like, I, I will only take a female or I only take a male because of the dynamics of their household. So, you know, Essex, goes through the applications, they push them out to districts who say, like, if you're sending out a student, like if we send out 10 students, they're going to send us 10 students. And then once we get the student pool, there's an application and the students write an essay and their parents write an essay. And we try to, um, we get to know the host families and they try to read the applications and find, you know, if this family is very musically inclined, then we have a musically inclined student, then we're going to try to tie them together. If this is an athletically inclined family and we have an athlete, then we want to kind of get them together. So they really, there's a, there's people on the committee that read the applications and uh, read the host parents' applications and try to make it, make a good match. Interesting, thanks. Yeah. Carolyn, I'm gonna ask you the same question I asked Sarah. Can we, um, can we allow people to uh, write to you by email, for example, and follow up with more questions if they have them? Absolutely, they can do that. And the other okay. thing you do is go to the rotary 7430yep.org and that will have our website and we have all kinds of links to people on the committee as well there. So you can reach out to anybody on the committee through there or you're okay. certainly welcome to share mine and I would be, I, I love Rotary Youth Exchange and I'm happy to talk about it anytime. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll provide that when we uh, have this recording. Um, mm -hmm. Listen, I, I got to thank you, Carolyn. Um, you've done a great job for sh sharing your insider's view of our our exchange youth exchange program. And I think we should all remember that we should consider to be host families. We should encourage our kids to visit other countries and somehow or the other support youth exchange in our program. Um, this is a wonderful program tonight, Carolyn. I thank you very much. Um, I'm gonna ask everyone to please consider joining us for the next Showcase Tuesday. Our last one for this Rotary year on June 21st about transforming your club's culture. The monthly theme is fellowship, but we're gonna do it two ways. We're gonna do it um, fellowship organizations and fellowships within, within Rotary Clubs. We'll consider welcoming new members, welcoming each other and growing Rotary. Our speakers will be Stephanie Urchik, past Rotary International Director, um, our, um, from Western Pennsylvania and uh, attorney Tom Gump, although he probably upset if I told you he was an attorney. Tom's a very affable guy from um, District 5950 in Minnesota and he's a noted expert in new club development. So please thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, have a great night and remember that this Showcase Tuesday has been recorded and will be available soon. Thanks a lot. 
Night.